occasionally we talk about guitar on the channel and uh, sometimes crypto too apparently. Anyway, thank you for everyone who's liked and subscribed recently. I think it's helped us to get the channel back to some state of repair and closer to the mediocrity that it was that we'd all become accustomed to. Right, so I was just on a Skype call with Paul and we were talking about this as a concept and I think when we learn guitar things, we kind of learn one thing at a time. And I feel like it's worth making these things that we learn quite useful. And he asked a question about, does Eric Johnson do kind of suspended triads? And uh, what it raised to my mind, and I don't know if this is or is not something that Eric Johnson does a ton of, but it sounds to me like the sort of thing that maybe I've heard him do. Leave a comment if you've got examples or you know if you think he doesn't do this or does, that'd be cool this kind of thing. So if I'm thinking in C major, I've got the root here, and a normal spread triad might have something like the root, the fifth, and then the third in the top. So the idea of a spread triad is that instead of having things just going root, third, fifth, you might jump root, fifth, third, and have that gap so it's a, a bit of a wider interval. So what I was saying was, what if instead of the third at the top, we played a nine, so you'd get the root, fifth, nine. And you see that that's neither a major nor a minor triad. It's kind of a suspended. But it's super musical, I think. So what I was saying was, because we know that that is neither minor nor major, we could use that pretty much off of most of the degrees of the scale. So here it is from the root. Here it is from the second degree, the D minor. We couldn't do it from the E because in the top you'd have an F sharp, which would not be a diatonic note to C major. So we could modify it with the actual third there. We could play it over the F, the fourth degree. We could play it over the G, the fifth degree. We could play it over the six, the A minor. So there was, uh, and we wouldn't really want to play it over the B because we have two notes that don't fit. So in C major, we could think C, D, F, G, A minor. So that'd be one, two, four, five, six. And so I think it would be really worth you kind of figuring that out in each key. So you could say, right, I can do this in C major and you experiment in C major for a while. And then you say, all right, what if we were in G major? So in G major, we start G. We can do it on the A, the second. We can do it on the C, the fourth. We can do it on the fifth, the D. We can do it on the E. And the next kind of logical step for me was, I thought, well, what if we resolved that suspension? So a suspension can be resolved, you know, a, a, a suspended chord. That's what we're referring to, that third there, which is suspended when we play it here. Uh, we're going underneath the note. So we're going and resolve up to your third. Then on the A, it'd obviously be a minor third. On the C, a major third. On the D, a major third. On the E, a minor third. Okay, and then we take that into each key and we do it in D, so in D. We start on the D. Uh, on the six, we can have this as well, on the B minor. On the A, the fifth. On the fourth and on the two. Or we could do it as well with those thirds that we just discussed. Okay, and you do that through each of the keys. Now, the other thing is we could do this with the root on not our D string. So what I'm gonna do is keep things roughly the same. And so I'm gonna have the root down here on our A string, our fifth on the G string, and our nine 
on the B string. Then the E, then the G, then the A, B. In C, it would look like this, C, D, E. Can't do it on the E, can I? On the F, on the G, A. So there's two shapes now, right? So we could go from the C, to the C, to the A, to the A, to the G, to the F. And then logically, you could also have your root on this C, right? So you do the same thing again. So C, G, and our nine, the D. D, E, uh, not E, F, G, A. And then what if we kind of join these things up? So C, D, and an, an F in the top maybe. Uh, so we would do that down here maybe. So that went C, D, F, D, C, D, F, G, So that, for me, might be the first spread triad I'd encourage you to learn because you can use it over the major or the minor chords that you find in a key, except for the third, so you could play that over your root, over your second, over your fourth, over your fifth, or over your A minor. So it becomes instantly useful pretty much whatever chord is happening underneath in a major context. Maybe that was helpful, maybe that wasn't. Then what I might do from there is think about inversions. So we got a C, a G, a D. So we got a D, a C, a G. Or we got a G, a D, and a C. Three ways to play those spread triads just in different orders. Same notes. Kind of a, a fresh sound. And do make sure you spend some time joining up to have the correct kind of third. But that's one really quick, I think, and easy way to get some spread suspended triads into your playing and in a way that might be instantly useful. Let me know if that was useful in the comments. I'll put together a Patreon kind of sheet showing you where these are and the backing track that I was playing over for the intro. Catch you in another video soon. Cheers.